Hello everybody, this is a video for free ed MOOC making hybrid learning efficient and engaging. The title of our module is Supporting Teachers in Hybrid Education, Where Do Teachers Find Support? In a hybrid education environment, planning is especially important, even for co-teaching partners with considerable experience. Whether you worked with your co-teacher for years or your new partners, it's always beneficial to prepare together everything in details before the class. Collaboration with your co-teaching partner should be purposeful, detailed, productive and enjoyable. Planning is key to the success of any course or lesson, and this is especially true for hybrid. The most challenging part of a planning, a hybrid class, is figuring out how to integrate the two experiences, the face-to-face -face and the online, so that they capitalize on and amplify each other. Co-planning is the best way to ensure that any co-teaching initiative succeeds. In this last unit, you will go through a couple of tips and steps or advices about what to focus on when co-planning a lesson in hybrid educational situation. Let's see these tips. The first tip, establish your personal vision for all. Before your first meeting, your first planning meeting, your potential co-teacher partner, reflect on your own personal ed educational vision related to co-teaching in hybrid situation. Some question stems to create your vision might include In what areas, topics, activities would I need the help contribution of my co-teaching partner? What period of time do I think, do I plan the co-teaching partnership to be implemented? A whole school year, a semester, a couple of weeks during the implementation of a class, class project or just one lesson? What would be the aims? What would be the purposes of the co-teaching partnership I'm preparing for? Is it differentiation? For a more efficient organization of a project-based learning activity or group working, more efficient organization of the teaching process in hybrid situation, is it something else? What academic goals do I have for my regular or special education needs students? Is there any specific content or special novels it's important to me to include in my curriculum? And nevertheless, which are my digital technology strengths and weaknesses? What kind of apps, sites, uh, digital tools can I use? What level of mastery can I use these? In what areas of digital competencies do I need contribution from my co-teaching partner? It is important to determine your own vision so you can share it with your pair partner teacher and find out theirs. Then the collaboration begins towards crafting your own shared vision. Tip number two. It's highly recommended to use co-planning to build empathy and understanding between partners. You should allow time to identify and discuss your teaching styles, interests, goals, strengths, fears, and weaknesses. Discuss divergent beliefs and what they might mean for your co-teaching ahead. Servicing templates can be used to learn more about yourselves and your colleagues. We can recommend that to use the adaptation to hybrid conditions of Hepner and Newman's strategic co-planning questions, a starting point to learn more about co-teaching -part co partners for preparing co-teaching in a hybrid situation as well. These adapted questions could sound like this. What are your expectations for students regarding online or in-person participation, preparation, assignments, and or homework completion, or anything else? What are your basic rules in remote or in in-person class environment? What are the consequences? Number three, typically how are students grouped for instruction in your virtual and in your physical learning environment? What model of co-teaching do you prefer or do you have experience in implementing? Fourth question could be, what instructional methods do you use in virtual and in physical learning environment? Is it collaboration? Is it flipped classroom? Is it anything else? How do you monitor and evaluate student progress in offline and online setups? 
which would it be efficient in a hybrid situation? You could also list and share with each other the digital tools, apps, uh, platforms that you can master. Which ones do you master both? Are there any? This is new for you. Do you differentiate instruction? For example, do you have uh, students with special educational needs or for students who need more instruction and practice? If so, how? How could you implement the differentiation in the hybrid situation? Number eight, how and when do you communicate with families? Are there any digital tools, apps you efficiently use in this? What are your general and digital strengths as a teacher? What are your weaknesses? Can you find a personal strength that can support a weakness of your partner? What do you see as your potential roles and responsibilities as school teachers in a hybrid situation? Or what are your biggest hopes for your work as a team? What are your biggest concerns? Using these or similar questions, you can discuss which, which aspects of teaching you excel in and where you feel you need more growth. However, just because of one teacher is stronger in one area, this doesn't mean that the other teacher stands back completely. The proficient teacher might take the lead while the other gets a chance to grow by observing practices and reflecting on their own skills. For example, if your co-teacher is more tech savvy in Google Suit or Google Science than you, this is your chance to pick up some tips and tricks. Tip number three. It's highly recommended to protect co-planning time. An efficient planning needs time and efficient collaboration. Therefore, make considerable effort to schedule substantial co-planning time that is free from interruptions. Research suggests that at least 40 minutes is ideal to properly co-plan. Not taking the time to plan together will lead to a disconnect, especially in the virtual environment. This can lead to confusion during the lesson or even animosity between co-teachers. Clearly designate meeting times for intended purposes. For example, co-planning activities in person, online, co-creating resources, evaluating students' learning, or anything else. For efficient scheduling, set up a recurring meeting on your calendars. Google Calendar works great, but it's not the only one. Make sure that there is a designated meeting link so you both know where you need to be in any situation. Also, it is very important to set objectives for all your planning meetings and make sure that they are met. Once you and your co-teacher start chatting, it can be easy to get off topic to make sure the regular planning meeting covers everything they need. Follow a planning checklist. Tip number four, get the right agreements in place. Determine roles and responsibilities. Your roles and responsibilities might be flexible and change throughout the year, but it's important to establish what each co-teaching partner expects from it, the other for the most efficient implementation of the teaching activities they are involved in. The, the, the work should be divided up fairly and support each other's strengths. For an efficient co-teaching partnership, it is highly recommended for partners to develop shared goals and to clarify, review education rules. In the online or hybrid environment, partners might find answers to questions like who is responsible for sending weekly emails or messages, uploading exercises or tasks, uh, materials in the virtual classroom, who will design the live lesson plans, video materials, presentation materials, who will adapt the paper assessment into an online ones? What are our roles, your roles, aims, tasks in planning, implementing synchronous or asynchronous activities? It is very important that both co-teaching partners to be involved in both in-person and online teaching, so they should pay attention to ensuring a fair division of workload. Also, to hold each other accountable and get on the same page, same page, both teachers can sign, it's optionally, but you can sign a co-teaching contract in which they 
can agree on the co-teaching models they would implement at different lessons or activities, define common expectations, establish classroom procedures and routines for both offline and online, synchronous or asynchronous activities, establish effective communication channels between the two of them, but also with students and their parents as well. It is also important to think of an e-learning platform that could support hybrid learning and that you both master. In this co-teaching context, the two educators should think of establishing common rules for planning and assessment or grading or evaluation. A very important tip is not tip number five. You should co-plan thoroughly and step by step. Once you are ready to begin planning out a hybrid lesson, make sure that you have plenty of time to build and refine it for the planning process, creating content, and if possible, piloting the lesson. Creating a successful lesson requires a lot more thought than simply taking half of your existing class sessions and converting them into an online one activities. Co-teaching partnerships allow you to keep the online and the face-to-face -face in balance but you have, as I told you, planned thoroughly. Let's see some steps in this step-by-step planning process. Step number one could be start at the foundation. Nothing complicated, just the basics. Every lesson, regardless of format, has a lesson plan or a co-teaching planning organizer, as you wish, with content description, goals and objectives. Internet is full of these kinds of templates. These comprise the overall picture of the lesson and should drive the lesson's entire development process from why it exists to what students should be able to know and do by the end of it. Use a format that includes all sections for co-teaching tasks for every educator, teaching rules, resources or tools to be used for both online and off uh, offline tasks. The second step in this co-planning um, process is the assessments, the co-planning of assessments. Determine and establish what your co-teaching partner, what major assessment you will use to allow students to demonstrate mastery of the learning objectives. Also, it is important to determine identical assessment types and forms for both online and offline groups. These should be both the major uh, summative assessments, test projects, portfolios, as well as smaller formative ones like homework discussion forums. You do not need to accurately create them in that moment. You can simply plan out what they will be and what students will be asked to do. Also, it is important to discuss with your co-teaching partner tasks related to the co-creation of the assessments and register it in your commonly agreed format of the common planning document. The first step in this process is co-planning activities. It's very important to identify activities that capitalize on the strengths of each type of environment, online or face-to-face, -face, and include those in your planning document. Also capitalize on the methodological and technical strengths of the co-teaching partners. Experienced educators say that as you start thinking of a hybrid lesson as the online ones with a certain number of face-to-face -face pre uh, students present, you realize that the planning is far simpler. There are two things that we should note more specially. We have to note that face-to-face -face is better for, or it's good for, establishing social presence or nonverbal communication or defining assignments or diagnosing students' conceptual uh, uh, problems and providing immediate feedback or brainstorming for role play for, for uh, students' demonstration of psychomotor skills. On the other hand, online is good for co-creation, collaborative in cloud or drive, reflective on-task discourse, making research work, gathering data, self-paced learning and practice, self-assessment quizzes with feedbacks, automatic grading with all kinds of um, multiple choice, true or false, fill in the blank tests. 
as you have identified the preferred activities, include these in your collaborative co-teaching planning document and establish what resources and tools are needed for their implementation. And last but not least, the fourth step, create and or co-create or find reuse content. Developing online content is the most time-consuming aspect of designing a hybrid course. It's time-consuming, but it's a very creative work. You have to plan to carve out the majority of your course development time on this step. It is here that you will be creating assignments, videos, finding resources, deciding on readings, writing collaborative tasks, uh, or anything else. Online tasks like quizzes, brainstorming discussions, and matching activities can be turned into their old school face-to-face -face versions much more easily than the other way around. Use sites or apps like Kahoot, Learning Apps, Mentimeter, WooClap. A very effective teaching strategy, best fit for hybrid education is the flipped classroom. In a hybrid schedule, flipping the classroom is a great way to maintain instru instructional momentum. Students watch a lesson remotely and apply their new knowledge in the virtual or physical classroom. Digital tools allow us to edit longer content into shorter videos. Tools like Screencastify, Nearpod, Edpuzzle, Insert Learning, Prezi Video or Loom allow you to quickly record audio while talking over slides. Video is not the only tool for flipping a classroom. Try flipping with a text, or image or a website for students to learn from home. For example, the class might be asked to um, read and annotate an article about a current event and contribute to a collaborative document where students share their thoughts. The next day, students meet in their groups and talk through and uh, further develop the product they began virtually. You can use sites or apps like Google Docs, Google Form, Jamboard, Miro, Mural, Padlet, and a lot more on, from the internet where you can find it high diversity of apps. Tip number six, consider co-debriefing and co-reflecting. It's the last tip, but it's also highly important. Co-debriefing helps teacher, teachers build trust, grow professionally and become more aware of themselves and one another through constructive critical analysis of teaching. As soon as possible, following a lesson, use co-generative dialogue to understand problems and co-generate solutions. Co-generative dialogue is when co-teachers discuss the issues that impact teaching and learning and collectively generate solutions to any problems. Co-reflecting enables colleagues, co-teaching partners, to identify what is working, what is not, what is necessary to change in uh, practice and the next steps that are needed to move forward. Research show that co-reflecting combines evaluation of students' learning, deep collegial discussion, professional learning, forward planning, and decision-making. It is recommended to honestly evaluate co-teaching relationships. There are several strategic co-reflective questions that can be used. Also, Hepner and Newman, uh, Newman uh, developed strategic core reflective questions that you can read on the screen. screen. Has parity been uh, achieved? Have the targets that we set up for a hybrid co-teaching process, have they been achieved? Could we use the technological tools, methods efficiently? Did the students learn efficiently in, from our collaboration? Are our resources freely shared? Do we feel our time was used productively? Were the roles and responsibilities efficiently set up and influenced it in a positive way, the lesson? 
Do we feel frequently acknowledged and reinforced by each other? Or you can formulate your own core reflective questions. With these, I thank you for your attention and I wish you a fruitful, engaging and efficient co-planning.